In this section, we will see what is uh, what is listed in the book as coming attractions, basically some ideas of where the world is going in terms of interesting ways of dealing with uh, climate change and climate impacts. Obviously the list is very subjective and it's definitely not exhaustive. Uh, the, we start with what is called repopulating the mammoth I think everybody's heard of the mammoths and how they went extinct and we've seen movies like the Ice Age, Ice Age 2 and I don't know if there are more Ice Age movies. Uh, let's start with the map of the permafrost uh, which is basically frozen soil and this region is warming as we will see this is warming faster than the rest of the world because of something called polar amplification and permafrost basically has incredible amount of frozen carbon and methane because organic matter uh, photosynthesized organic matter is frozen into the soil there are seasonal cycles where the top layer is thawed down to certain depth and then refrozen during the winter months with global warming uh, especially with polar amplification that seasonal warming is going deeper and there is a trend in permafrost thawing and obviously there is a, a chance, a probability of runoff warming where the uh, amount of methane and carbon dioxide that's locked in to the permafrost or frozen soils can be released, accelerate the warming, accelerate the polar amplification and further thaw the permafrost. And there is clear evidence that there is thawing of permafrost uh, happening. The idea of repopulating the uh, mammoth steppe uh, comes from the theory that the uh, megafauna that colonized this region uh, during the last ice age were responsible for maintaining the permafrost by basically being grazers so they would move the snow and graze and expose the soil to heat loss to the atmosphere and keep the temperatures colder whereas when you removed these grazers uh, the snow actually insulates the permafrost and allows it to thaw plus the snow reflects a lot of the sunlight but absorbs a lot of it and then that radiation of the absorbed uh, snow layer, the, the snow layer that's warmed by the radiation is then warming the permafrost below. So the idea originally proposed by some people was that the megafauna went extinct because the vegetation shifted from these uh, kind of tundra into uh, trees and uh, uh, so on. Whereas the idea of the Zamov, uh, scient the scientist named Zamov I think they are brothers, we will see in a minute, is that it's the humans who hunted down the megafauna and that's what led to the shift in the vegetation which then contributed to the warming uh, and the thawing of the permafrost. Okay, let's look at some details of that. Um, this is the image of migratory woodland reindeer being driven by an Evanx herder. The herder is seen here in the next picture. You can see him carrying the stick riding on the shoulder of the reindeer. Uh, by an Evanx herder through a valley in the Oimekon region of Saka Republic in the Indigirka, Indigirka River Basin of Russia. A lot of complicated names, sorry about that. The Evanx are famed reindeer riders and pastoralists. Their unique saddles are situated on the reindeer's shoulder and employ no stirrups. Uh, their balance is guided by a long stick that you see in the photograph uh, here. Okay, And this is something called a Yakutian horse which is a rare breed that is Siberian hardy. It's really able to live in this miserable cold windy conditions with hardly any food to be found. At 14 hands, it's short, compact and sturdy. This picture shows a subtype of Yakut called the Middle Koliyama, Kolima. Sorry. It was brought to the Kolima Valley by the Yakut people in the 1200s, almost a millennium back, and quickly adapted to the extreme cold. It survives the winters by pushing snow away with its hooves to get at the, br uh, the brows beneath. 
The Yakut have a legend that says that when the Creator was disturbing the riches of the world, his hands froze when he got to Siberia and dropped everything he had. This explains the abundance, riches and the extraordinary creatures in a land full of diamonds. Okay, so here is the idea of uh, polar amplification. You can see that warming has a pattern with a uh, cooling here in the North Atlantic which is often related to the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation which you can look up in my other podcasts if you don't know what that means. Uh, and that uh, actually allows the warming to be less here but people also talk about other feedbacks from the atmosphere and the uh, polar amplification is related to this snow albedo feedback or ice albedo feedback where if you have more snow and ice there is more reflection of the sunlight hence cooling and if you start melting the snow and ice then the albedo or reflectivity of the sunlight is reduced so you absorb more sunlight and melt more snow and ice but there is also evidence that Arctic have these unique cloud systems which also can provide a feedback that creates this polar amplification which means warming that's at a much faster rate than the rest of the world. Obviously this contributes the, to the thawing of uh, the permafrost as well. This is uh, up to 2019 but we know that 2020 despite the COVID lockdown, reduced emissions and so on actually ended up uh, creating uh, uh, one of the warmest uh, years in record. Sorry I had to pause it uh, because somebody knocked at the door. Um, so that's the polar amplification and that's what uh, can uh, actually hasten the permafrost thawing and when permafrost thaws this is what happens you can see lots of houses in various parts of Alaska for example where the houses are sunk and people are just sitting and watching TV in those distorted houses and so on and they also have lots of uh, methane locked in which can get released through these uh, holes that get created when uh, permafrost thaws and you can see how it can burn off. Um, obviously there are the story is a bit more complicated because it turns out that uh, when permafrost thaws sometimes it forms a lake on the soil and the lake can have uh, phytoplankton growing in it which can again sequester some of the carbon and so on and so forth. So the so-called earth system feedbacks are always much more complicated than one imagines. Uh, just to give us our, give ourselves a bit of an idea, this is a map showing soil, soil organic carbon uh, in the top layer at 0 to 3 meter depth for the northern circumpolar permafrost region. So this is being shown uh, from a paper from uh, our Scientific American from 2016. So this is carbon in top 3 meters of the soil and in kilograms per square meter of the surface and you can see the various levels of distribution lower as you go into lower latitudes and higher as you get closer to the Arctic Circle. Uh, right? Or at least close to the Arctic uh, region, Arctic Ocean. Okay? So this is what is in danger of being thawed. So th this is the, the scientists, Russian scientists, the Zimovs. They believe that large grazing animals helped maintain rich Arctic grasslands during the Ice Age, which went from about 120,000 years to about 18,000 years ago. And then the, the last Ice Age ended and then the human beings evolved into agriculturalists, pastoralists and then of course now you are Anthropocene uh, technocrats, technologists. Uh, in part by fertilizing the grass. So they would move the snow, graze on the grass that's below, expose the soil for uh, heat loss and freezing and also uh, their feces and urine would fertilize the grass as well. Uh, in hopes of bringing back the dry steppe and also slowing permafrost thaw, Zimovs are now importing wild horses and other grazers to a site along uh, the tributary of the Kolyma River. They call it the plant.
Pleistocene Park. Uh, for those who know paleo, Pleistocene uh, runs over the last couple of million years where ice ages have been happening at every 100,000 year cycle. Before that we had faster 41,000 year cycle and so on and so forth. So here are some nice images I took from an uh, article from the Atlantic on the Zimovs on the Pleistocene Park. This is of course the modern uh, picture with Yakutian horses grazing here. These are some of the uh, imaginations by artist, I think it's some uh, Kong, I Timothy Kong maybe. Uh, you can see the various mammoths and uh, reindeers and some other animals and here this is a remind this reminds me of this movie Ice Age here and here are the evil humans coming along and hunting the big uh, megafauna uh, animals that uh, that were grazing and maintaining the ecology here this is a nice map that shows where the uh, ice sheets came down to during the maximum of the last ice age around 21 to 25,000 years ago and it comes all the way down here to uh, Long Island. In fact Long Island is what is called a terminal moraine. As the glaciers grow they push everything ahead of them and where they end uh, is where all the a lot of the moraines get deposited so Long Island is formed from this so-called terminal moraine. Over uh, Eurasia you had the Uran Eurasian ice sheet and this was called the Laurentide ice sheet and of course Greenland was frozen and Antarctica and Himalaya also had uh, glaciers. So the data comes from all these places to interpret the temperature changes and other changes and vegetation changes. So this is a map from the Canadian Museum of Nature showing the distribution of the glaciers again in this gray uh, color here. Uh, this is showing primary vegetation zones during the last glacial maximum 25,000 to 18,000 years ago. Uh, surrounding areas represent wetter, so light pink regions, and drier, so dark blue regions of the mammoth steppe. So that's the image of the mammoth step there, uh, or at least the schematic. It stretched from Europe and Asia into North America via the Bering Strait land bridge, which was frozen. This is blamed or at least held responsible for a lot of the migrations. In fact, uh, lots of the uh, mammoths probably disappeared just a few thousand years ago on some of the islands down uh, here. So the uh, this represents the largest terrestrial biome during the last ice age. Okay, so this is the idea of repopulating the mammoth steppe. Bring back the grazers, let the uh, ecosystem recover to the uh, tundra because trees are bad for soil uh, temperature whereas tundra can allow the permafrost to remain frozen and the grazers can help maintain that uh, tundra and help the permafrost remain frozen and numbers uh, exist on how much carbon that would keep locked down and that's uh, several gigatons of course so that's the uh, first of the coming attractions.